This Sunday marks five years since Robin Williams' death by suicide. The beloved comedian and actor touched millions, especially his children. And joining us now is Zach Williams, Robin's eldest son. It's nice to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, your dad did touch so many lives, as you know, people he never met. But for you, I mean, this is your dad. And five years on now, there's a lot that happens in the grief and in the mourning period. How are you guys doing today? Well, uh, my family and I are, are doing all right. Um, I have a two-month-old son, mm -hmm. which is exciting and new and a lot of work, but I'm happy I can wake up every morning and show up for him. Um, we're, we're adjusting to the new normal, but uh, day over day, things are, uh, are getting better. Um a lot of people who were longtime fans of your father's work, and you know he brought so many people so much joy, were surprised when they heard about his passing, surprised when they heard about his struggles. For you, though, to watch the public go through that while you're trying to deal with all this privately, I imagine that was a real struggle in and of itself. How did you handle the two? Well, I wasn't really prepared for grieving publicly, and I had trouble differentiating the difference between privately grieving with my family and sharing that process with the world. So it was really hard, but um, um, over time I learned how to, to share what was needed and, and, and to be able to uh, spend time with, you know, more the kind of a public environment uh, and, and then separate time to spend with my family. You know, so um, so it was a learning process. Yeah, um, losing a parent will change you, um, as many of us know. It's also changed, though, what your focus is, um, and in terms of what you're talking about and what you're talking about publicly, and your focus on really making mental health an important part of the conversation, on talking about suicide, on talking about helping people you love, and helping them find the help that they need. Um, what has that been like for you as you're navigating that path now? Uh, to focus on mental health advocacy, advocacy means to uh, really identify the underlying issues associated with what's going on both culturally and, and with our communities. And uh, my specific focus is stigma mm -hmm. and ending the discrimination associated with. And so the effort and energy uh, 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 provided by thousands of organizations across the U.S. requires people wanting to end that stigma so mm -hmm. that money and, and, and donations and funds can be unlocked for research and for organizations seeking to make a difference and impact in those communities. And how are you seeing, I mean, the conversations that you're having and even the conversations that are being had to reduce that stigma in the last five years, it does feel like, especially within the last year or two, there has been a little bit more of a groundswell of not only support, but of willingness to talk about it. Do you find that? I find that young people, the you know, people under 25, uh, are much more willing to talk about what they're dealing with, their personal challenges and struggles, and are finding ways to connect both with with others uh, in their community and also, you know, older generations. And and I'm really hoping that we can continue to be brave and courageous when it comes to being vulnerable and open about the issues and struggles that we deal with personally. And I'm I'm finding that things are opening up, mm -hmm. but it's there's momentum. But we have to keep on uh, uh, continuing to apply effort and energy to ending the stigma. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned you have a, a two-month-old son uh, who's named after your dad. There is so much joy in becoming a parent, and there is so much joy in seeing this new life. Um, I would imagine, too, you're thinking a lot about what you're going to tell him about his grandfather um, so that you carry on that legacy, so that he knows who he was, not just the public Robin Williams, but that he knows who he was for you as a father and all of those memories. What are some of the things that you're looking forward to sharing with your son about your dad? Well, one of the things that I would want to share with my son when he, when, when the time is right is that my dad loved to do what he did. Mm -hmm. He was so passionate about entertaining and, and comedy and he just gave his, he gave his all in, 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 
and entertaining. And um, I would want my son to follow in that, in that path of passion, whatever it may be. And I want him to do so courageously and, and with love and joy. And so that's what I really hope I can instill in him. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like a... Sounds like a good plan for moving forward, and he's a lucky little boy. Really a pleasure to have you here, Zach, today. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to be Thanks here. Thanks for Thank taking you. the time. Uh, and we do want to point out, too, um, we have been putting up on the screen, but the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, the number is there. The website is there. If you or someone you know is hurting, please do not hesitate to make that call.